Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Point of Jew. I am VJ Hirsch, Jeremy Hirsch. This is my Magneto Was Right shirt, because on today's episode, we're going to be talking with uh, film critic and blogger Will Martinez about WandaVision, about Marvel, and just so much stuff. So spoilers ahead, because we will be talking about uh, the WandaVision finale and a couple things, potentially, potential spoilers in some of the upcoming Marvel projects. Um, gonna forego the the normal what's brewing this week because gonna be talking about the t the tv and movie stuff in in the actual podcast interview so i am extremely excited about that um i have kept kind of my little office motif here uh from when i did the the baseball card ripping video which uh by the way everyone who joined live or, or watched on facebook thank you very much um people did not double catch it on the on the uh reissued youtube edition which more than okay. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. So maybe one or two of those in the future. Um, excited to talk to Will. Uh, again, spoilers. I have to keep saying that because we are going to talk about what happened in WandaVision. We're going to talk about um, some of the uh, the post credit scenes and where things are headed. So I just want to give you guys the, the, um, the not all clear, but the, the heads up. There we go. I can speak and remember things. Um, so excited about that. And just as a reminder, because it hasn't ended yet, uh, still looking for your subscriptions on the YouTube channel. Pretty, pretty pleased once we get to 100 subscriptions. And if you've uh, subscribed and left a comment on any of the YouTube videos, uh, you will be in a drawing where I will uh, pick a winner and give a $25 uh, streaming gift card of your choice. So Hulu has one, uh, Netflix has one, Amazon has one, or Hey, if you want something different, knock yourself out. But three dollars just just for subbing and uh, and for commenting on any of these videos. Give your opinion. Tell me what you thought about Wandavision or or what you thought about um, any of the Marvel projects or what you think about this interview or, or any of the other previous podcasts. Feedback is delightful. You can also uh, nerd rage out with me and argue with me on Twitter at DJ Hirsch forty two. You know what? Got to actually go to my Twitter and make sure that's it because all the social media handles, right? It makes things super difficult. But yes, it is at DJ Hirsch 42 as I quickly uh, lose my mind. Hey, it, I, maybe I was in Westview. Who knows? Uh, but without further ado, uh, let's get in right to the nerd ranting and arguing. Well, there's not really much arguing. We were both very civil. But into my nerd rants and uh, Will's more professional opinion on this week's episode of Point of Jew. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Point of Jew. I am your host, DJ Hirsch, Jeremy Hirsch. I'm super excited today. My guest is a lover of all things cinema, television, uh, Will Martinez. Will is a blogger on letterbox.com. Will, thank you so much for taking time out of a fun little Saturday to, uh, to, to talk TV with me, to talk movies with me. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, really excited to be here and uh, talk about, you know, WandaVision and films in general <laughs> and all the things. Yeah, all it up. should be good. I mean, it's, it's, it's pop culture. It's, it's what's going on now. Um, I was reading some of your uh, reviews on letterbox.com. I, I wasn't familiar with it, but very mm -hmm. cool social media platform specifically for uh, movie lovers uh, such as yourself. Um, what, what got you into, you know, film and TV as much as you are, and then kind of what, you know, made you want to, you know, start blogging and talking about it further? I mean, I, I've, I've watched movies like countless and religiously for as long as I can remember. Um, but I think, um, I soon got like really into the veering of, and, you know, being critical of it at a, when I, I would say safely around when I was the age of 13. 14, you know, for, for, for years, movies were just entertainment value to me. And then it was around that time when I got, as the order I got, where I really got, you know, into the passion of like filmmaking. And you've and done some, that. you have a YouTube channel too, where you've done some shorts and things that I've saw as well. Ultimately, yeah. are, are you, are you more geared towards wanting to stay in writing or, you know, is, is directing and, and crafting stories kind of where your future holds? Yeah, I think kind of more uh, writing. It's kind of where my future holds. Uh, I tried a little bit of directing too, I mean, short films, and I, I enjoy it. Um, um, 
but yeah, I think uh, writing has kind of been where my main passion lies. I just read this morning your review of the WandaVision series, and I know that's kind of what we're talking about today. Um, overall, you know, it seemed that you were pretty, you know, I'll, I'll link below in the description so everybody else can read your review and your other reviews too. Um, but it seemed that you really liked the series. You were pretty impressed with it. I know as it got on, you know, maybe a little bit less with the traditional MCU flair of it, but overall you seem to really like uh, that storytelling and that world that they brought. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I really, it felt like, a, like I said in my review, a breath of fresh air for the MCU. You know, it started out, you know, a little bit more like very original and refreshing and very different from anything that they've ever done. And suddenly as they got a little into the later episodes, it, you know, it's followed that MCU formula and a lot more, but I think even then it's still, you know, it never once lost me. Like what, were your kind of, what, what stands out the most to you about that series? So when we're talking about, you know, it was a little deviated a bit from the traditional MCU formula. What stands out to you? Like, what did they do right? What did they do different that really impressed you? I think it really uh, impressed me more than anything was uh, the evolution of uh, Wanda's character and how that all played out. Because, well, not Wanda, but also Vision, too. Because uh, th those were two characters to me, you know, that up to this point I'd really liked. But uh, seeing, I think, the growth of Wanda throughout this series, it was uh, very compelling. And, I think uh, they did a good job giving them giving them both depth, depth and making you yes. care about that relationship a lot more yes, than perhaps sure. they did in the film. I mean, that relationship to me was, you know, I didn't really care from, I didn't care nearly enough before the series started. And then by the end of the series, I cared way more than I could ever imagine. Uh, honest answer here. Honest answer here. When they announced this, when they announced the slate of series, I guess, you know, WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, um, She-Hulk, everything that they're going into. Um, was this one of the ones you were most excited about? Or was this something, because I know you said you weren't that into them before this. Was this something that you were, you know, not really excited for and just, I'm going to watch it because it's, you know, Marvel, but you know, maybe didn't end up caring about it beforehand as much yeah. as you do now. I was kind of in the middle because I liked the idea. It sounded certainly a lot different than what they've done before. And um, also, too, I mean, I I love Elizabeth Olsen and poor Bettany. So, so as much as I may have not cared about those characters, and, it, you know, only you're on in their MCU projects, I was really excited to see both of them because I, I think previous movies haven't utilized both of them nearly enough. So I was excited about the idea of them, you know, finally getting to be fleshed out the way that this series thankfully did. Do you, do you think, and I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. Yeah. Do you think that, you know, some of the early reactions to the, to the finale and to the whole series um, do you think people are being impacted by what they thought and wished was going to happen versus mm -hmm. just paying attention to the story that was being crafted? Do you think there's too much of that? And then also, oh. do you think that that's just fans' fault, Marvel's fault, or kind of a mix of the two? Um, yeah, I think for sure a lot of, I think you could call it fan theories and fan is, and, uh, expectations definitely uh, play a factor into it a lot. I mean, I'll say it's a little bit of both. I mean, um, you know, I guess uh, we'll, we'll avoid spoilers, right? Yeah, you can go into spoilers. They've had a couple days by the time this comes out to digest. Okay. So, spo so spoiler warning, we are going to – I yeah. shouldn't have that to start. We are going to spoil things if you have not watched the finale yet. I do not feel bad for you at this point because it's been several days by the time this comes out, but spoiler warning, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. But like you were saying, I would say it's a little bit of mix of both. I mean – I think the problem is, you know, because, you know, especially given social media, you know, fan theories are running around like crazy these days. So, and it was, I think I sort of tweeted about it, how it's a little bit, you know, how, like when people, uh, people feel towards the Star Wars trilogy, you know, sequel trilogy, you know, they, and um, so I think part of it is because, yeah, so many fans set themselves for oh, own self of a disappointment because I don't know if you saw the interview with uh, what's his, the WandaVision director. Who's oh, uh, the, uh, Matt, um, was it Mark Shankard? Yeah, Mark Shankard. Yeah. 
I mean, he spoofy said right before the finale dropped, yeah, a lot of you are going to be disappointed. <laughs> because he's, you know, he's obviously seen all the fan dairies out there and running around and um, yeah, but I mean, it's, to be fair, too. So, it's, uh, so yeah. and I saw some of those Matt Shankman interviews, and I saw, um, you know, Paul Bettany's early interview where he was setting some things yeah, up and then would... had to clarify. So, I think you, you, it's okay. You can you can give your point of view if it differs from mine. I take no offense. Oh, yeah. I I agree with you wholeheartedly that fans picked up certain things that were not there and just went nuts with it, like Mephisto, Mephisto theories. And, you know, introducing the X-Men and making it more of a um, House of M series than it really was going to be. Mm. But the flip side of that, in my opinion, just my opinion, when you cast Evan Peters, who was Quicksilver in the X-Men universe, when you have, so I I, I zeroed in on, and I'm not disappointed, I love the series. I'm not saying this except solely to be a contrarian at the moment. Mm. When you constantly have, uh, Monica Rambo talk about this engineer mm-hmm. and it wasn't just like I have an engine you know I have an engineering friend and then oh I got this guy that's incredible mm-hmm. oh we're gonna go meet the engine you you are you are writing to set up certain anticipation and yes people went nuts with it that it was gonna be you know Reed Richards or Blue Marvel or whomever yeah. it was gonna end up being so from some of the castings how some of the things were were written I almost to a certain level don't blame the fans because mm-hmm. there were seeds in there that were more than a little blatant. And then I think Marvel does this in, in, in films and probably will in TV because it's great word of mouth to have people arguing and making yeah. videos and coming up with content that's all over because people mm-hmm. want to tune in to catch what you have. But then that does lead to certain levels of disappointment. So I do put a little bit on this on Marvel with how they do storytelling or how they want to tell a story not saying they don't craft the beautiful world and a lot of things merge and come together, but I do feel it's a little bit on them too. You know, your thoughts. I mean, yeah, I completely agree with everything you just said. I, I, that's where I was, yeah, I would say it's, it's a mix of both. You know, I think certain fans set themselves up for disappointment because they're expecting things that really won't set up within the show. But like you said, I mean, I'm I like I'm very like indifferent and very much in the middle of in regards to the whole Quicksilver thing. <laughs> I still don't think I don't know I mean how to feel about that entirely because I mean it was amusing how was <laughs> when they <laughs> said the whole Ralph Borner thing, you know, we found out what his real name was. I mean I suddenly laughed. I couldn't help but <laughs> I mean but it really it feels, was just like yeah. Oh it sorry, go ahead. It feels like they were so, like, I, I think they purposely got – I mean, Evan Peters is a good actor. Let's not yeah, discredit sure. anything on that for a second. Yeah. I feel like they the, they hired – and I mean, he was known to be part of the project really early on. So, I think yeah. that's what got a lot of the talk and speculation going. But mm-hmm. it feels like, ultimately, his character arc was to be a boner joke at the end of it. Like, that's – Yeah. I am a little disappointed. Not that he's not an alternate universe Quicksilver or something, but it feels like his entire arc was to end up to be, you know – Pardon the verbiage, but he, he's a dick joke. At the end of the day, yeah. he's a dick joke. And that's really what that boiled down to. Yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, it's kind of like the Manor end thing all over again, but even weirder. <laughs> yeah, it just... Um, yeah, so... I mean, yeah, it was a door... To me, it says ultimately a door ray gag. So I don't blame people at all, certainly, for being disappointed. I mean... I certainly wasn't disappointed that he wasn't Quicksilver because really after a couple of weeks, I was thinking, okay, I think that was a completely misdirection. Yeah. You got to have a couple red herrings. I don't think that that's, I don't yeah. think that that's too terrible, but I think if people look at yeah. this, you know, just as an exploration, and I think you touch on this in your review too, as an exploration of processing grief. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was a good story. And like you pointed out earlier, it was something very different from normal MCU fare. And yeah. I, I think going out on a limb and trying different things just because it's a superhero genre doesn't need, mean you need constant explosions in battles. I mean, stuff like that is nice. And the finale certainly uh, gives some cool things. Yeah. But I, I thought it was a very different piece than what Marvel, you know, traditionally brings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, yeah, I mean, even one of the things I loved about the show was um, 
No, we got a couple. Uh, we got a lot of care. Well, obviously, we got a lot of returning characters. Characters we hadn't seen in the uh, years, like uh, you know, Darcy Lewis, you know, Cat Dennings coming back, and Randall Park coming back as uh, Agent Wu, and the main characters that I did not care for in previous movies. Really big standout characters in the series. In fact, uh, I was so. In fact, um, one of my complaints about the finale is. Uh, Darcy Lewis, I mean, she, Darcy, we were to get that one scene with her. She disappeared in the last couple episodes. Yeah, it was really weird. I, yeah, I, um, I read, I don't know, I read someone's, I don't know if this might just be a theory, but it was an interesting theory that part of the, they probably, because, you know, they filmed most of the show right before COVID. Yeah. You no, know, the productions were shut down. But in those last few episodes, when they came back, they probably had some scheduling, if, you know, issues. So that's why I'm wondering if, um, you know, some characters like Darcy got the show cut, uh, you know, the show to end the stick. That's a really good point. I didn't think about that. Entirely possible. I mean, because, yeah. I mean, for the most part, as long as you had Catherine Hahn and you had Lizzie Olsen and you had Paul Bettany, you had who you, you know, really, really needed to complete everything. Yeah. So that's a really good point. Um, yeah. Is there anything, you know, a couple of things that, whether it's, you know, theories you personally wanted to see, you know, tossing out the side of the story for a second. Is there anything, or you know what, we can include the story too. Is there certain things that disappointed you that you didn't see either more of or thought that they should have done or that you, you know, just wanted to see in general? Yeah. Um, one thing that I wasn't really disappointed that we didn't see, but I was totally expecting 100% to see in the finale was no strange, no Dr. Strange. I was totally expecting Benedict Cumberbatch. I think everybody thought for sure up. he'd show up. Yeah. I was waiting for that moment, especially with his two end credit scene. Oh, we're definitely going to see him. You know, even uh, Compton, Compton um, Han, uh, you know, Agnet, uh, uh makes a mention of him, I think, briefly in the finale there, calling him, you know, the show show is supreme. But, um, yeah, I was waiting for that moment. And I won't say I really – in fact, I won't say I was disappointed that we didn't see him. I think – I was fine with it, but that was, I guess I was more shocked than disappointed that we, uh, that was not a, uh, I thought that was going to be the big cameo. Do you think that he would have overshadowed the series if he showed up? Or do you think that just would have been some nice I mean, icing on the cake? I think, I mean, at the very least, I was just hoping that um, he was going to show up in like a, some, some kind of clear setup for Dark Strange 2. So I didn't think he would actually be like a natural supporting character. Just like a very quick, you know, guest cameo. I think that makes sense. Out yeah. of the two, out of the two uh, after credit scenes, so to speak. Mm. Um, again, spoilers, people. Um, we had the one setting up Monica Rambo to go. Uh, I, I guess uh, intergalactic, so to speak, because the scrolls wanted to see yeah. her. Um, probably Talos, I'm assuming, or or you know maybe the, whoever Fury's with at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we had the other scene, you know, where you see that Wanda's mastered uh, being able to project herself different places to do different things. And then she hears the voices of her children at the very end, which I know what, I, I know what I'm thinking, but which of those two scenes excites you more or, or equally, it could be equal for different reasons. What are your, actually, what are your thoughts on both of those scenes and what they set up to you? Um, I like both of them. I mean, you know, individually, um, you know, I think uh, the first one definitely felt like an obvious, you know, setup for Captain Marvel 2. Because we know uh, Monica is going to appear, you know, uh, appear in that movie. So that's what, um, so that definitely felt like a very Captain Marvel 2 lead. And uh, to me, I think the, if I had to pick a favorite one, it was, the, it was the last one. And I think particularly because, I don't know about you, if you felt this way too, but uh that felt like not only an obvious lead in to uh, Doctor Strange, Multiple of Madness. I think I'm in agreement with some people that it felt very uh, Sam Raimi. Yes. Like, I, I feel like that. totally felt like that. I don't know for sure if it was, but if we hear that eventually that, you know, Sam Raimi specifically directed that scene, I wouldn't be surprised because <laughs> gave off kind of, you know, very Evil Dead vibes. I could definitely see that. I didn't think about that at the time, but yeah, no, I didn't you're... either. But then I heard many people mention it over Twitter, and I was like, "Oh yeah, totally." 
<laughs> it got me more hyped for the for the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness film, though. Oh, because, sure. But that also, so we so we know she hurt her children. We know there's a follow up there. But I think, I, mm -hmm. I mean, some people are talking about it. But I, I so I'm gonna reel myself back for a second. Yeah. I I I, I want to describe something to you. See your thoughts on it, and then we could talk about where we think it's gonna go. Mm -hmm. I originally when I when they had the reveal of of the White Vision using the Vision's, you know, deceased body. And even before, um, you know, Wanda told Vision that she, that he was, the one in Westview was made from the Mind Stone piece that resides in her. I yeah. thought they could resolve the whole issue by basically putting the Westview Vision into the body of the White Vision. That's not the route that they, that they went, but I thought they could merge soul and body. And I also thought it wouldn't work because the whole show, as we've discussed, is about grief. And so I thought that that would be too neat of a way to do something. But then the show somewhat resolves yeah. it by letting Westview Vision activate all the memories in uh, the White Vision, for lack of a better phrase. Mm -hmm. um, did, you, did you think, did you have any preconceived notions on what you thought they should do with Vision? And then how did you feel about how they, how they played that out? And where do you think that they'll go from there? Yeah, um, I, that was kind of my thinking too. Is um, I mean, I, I was worried that they would also wrap it up kind of too ni nicely, and that um, they would kind of do something like, okay, yeah, you know, rescue, rescue vision. Now it simply becomes, I guess, it goes back in the old vision body, body, which right now is the right vision's body, and I think. Be, like I said, when so much of this show is about, you know, Wanda having to learn how to overcome her grief, I should feeling that would have been, I guess, too happy of an ending. Yeah, I think so. Especially since, you know, you know, Wanda, you know, okay, she's not really technically a villain throughout the series, but she certainly does some very, you know, questionable villain like things, which we see, you know, the fact that she really kind of held this entire town and the people in this town rescue hostage <laughs> essentially which so I, I think if they had done something like that that would have been you know wanted you know she needed to face some kind of consequence towards the end there and I think if they had didn't done something like say like you said rescue vision becomes now into white vision's body I think that would have been you know, too too clean, I guess, of an ending. Yeah. So ultimately, I I like the way they wrapped it up, um, because you know it it shows that she obviously had to do the right thing and you know sacrifice her happiness, ultimately this to fix <laughs> fix the mess she created at the beginning of the series. Do you think it's going to be too uh, cute? Cutesy is the wrong word. But obviously that white vision left and we'll obviously see him in the future. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be too, do, do you think it would un, uh, maybe undo some of the impact WandaVision has? Because now he remembers everything. So he obviously mm. has his memories. He's going to, I would assume, know how he feels about Wanda. You know, she's, a, she's essentially, in my opinion, maybe, maybe they'll go a different route. Maybe they'll surprise us. But it feels like she's going to get her whole family especially from the end credit scene and then seeing that Vision is out there with, with his memories again. It feels like she's going to get everything back. Or do you think that, you know, she essentially, maybe she earned and deserves that happy ending and maybe it is better place that it'll happen um, later down the road? Or do you think that does negatively impact the, what the show uh, accomplished? Yeah, I mean, I'm, it, I could potentially go either way, the way I see it. it could undent, don't, I mean, I guess it really just boils down to what their execution would be. Because we know, we know eventually she's going to figure out how to get her kids back. Because especially since, um, you know, Tommy and Billy are two, you know, they eventually become, what's the Retcon and Speed? Speed and Wiccan, yeah. Of, and we know Marvel is going to eventually use those characters. Oh, they're setting up a whole Young Avengers thing. Yeah, exactly, for sure. So we're going to see them become come back somehow down the line. I don't know if it's going to be Doctor Strange 2 or something else in the future. Um, 
you know, one way I could also see it is, you know, obviously we know that Dark Strange 2 is going to play into the Multiverse of Madness. So maybe it's, you know, I, it looks like there in the end, maybe she tries to, you know, obviously go into, or I guess travel into a different reality, or, you know, different dimension, which are final kids. So, I mean, and that's, I guess, one way, you know, because I think, you know, much of Phase 4 is going to eventually dive into the multiverse. I definitely think that that's the setup. So, yeah, that's definitely... We'll get into that in a second, too. So we, we've just wrapped this series, and we're mm-hmm. about to head into Falcon and Winter Soldier. Are you, you know, with what you were expecting for WandaVision and that kind of, you know, flipped your thoughts on, or, around? Because I don't think many people thought it was going to be as good of a series as it was. Um, are your expectations maybe the same or are now higher for, for the next series that's going to be um, – in another in another two weeks right we got a week off and then we got the uh we got this show how how you how are you preparing for that what do you what are you thinking about that oh my you know see for me uh ever since they first announced the slate of tv shows falcon and winter soldier for me has been pretty much at the top because i mean i'm definitely captain america fanboy i've always been and um and um, so I love, I've always loved both of those characters, you know, Falcon, Sam, and, uh, you know, Bucky. So, and um, to, to me, it's, that story's been the the highest on my uh, t- tips and highest on my uh, most excited list because um, one of my favorite Marvel movies also is, I don't know, but is um, The Winter Soldier and Civil Best War. Best Marvel movie, in my opinion. Best yeah. Marvel movie. Yes, yeah, me too. Yeah, as far as like the solo individual Marvel movies go, at least for me, it's always been Winter Soldier. So I really looked at this sh- show as basically be gonna probably be like the sequel to technically to Winter Soldier and Civil War. In a yeah. lot of ways, and that's what really gets me excited. And also seeing the uh, re- return of um, Baron uh, Zemo, I think is really an underrated villain amongst all the other MCU villains. So I, what, after seeing Civil War, when I saw it in theaters, yeah, did not like the movie. Oh, okay. At all. I was disappointed by it. But I went back last year and I rewatched every Marvel movie mm-hmm. in uh, timeline order, not not date of release, but actually like where the movies fit. Yeah. And I don't I don't know if that had anything to do with it. I I think Civil War is a great movie. I went yeah. from the first time seeing it, not liking it, to once I watched and then how it fit and everything and just how they used Zemo. He won. He's yeah. one of the very few villains in a movie to actually win. And his plan, yep. I mean, a little bit overcomplicated at times because he needed people to be in certain spots to make things yeah. work. Convenient, yeah. Yeah. But we could throw that out the window and just yeah. from a character <laughs> perspective – he had good motivation for why he wanted to do things and he was, he was compelling and he didn't overshadow anything else in that film. And then we get hit, you know, people's complaints was, Oh, he wasn't in the comic costume or anything like that. And this series plans on adding to sort of his vengeance against the superheroes and he's going to be full on super villain. Yep. Uh, it, it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, with Barry Zemo in civil war, I mean, if his plan doesn't succeed, and if he didn't win, ultimately the Ven- Daners wouldn't have ever won at the end, you know, of Infinity War. So that, so in a way, he um, affected the outcome of, uh, you know, when looking back at it, you know, because completely tore apart the Avengers. Obviously, so that's one of the things, to, like, including everything you just mentioned, why I've always found him to be a fascinating villain. So yeah, his return is what I'm looking forward to. Um, you know, um, obviously seeing how, you know, Sam Wilson will ultimately, by the end of the series, become Captain Marvel. I mean, no, not Captain Marvel. Captain, I, I followed you, Captain America. <laughs> Captain America, of course. My apologies. No, you're good. Um, yeah, and obviously we got uh, Emily, Emily Van Camp coming back as Sharon Agent Carter. So one question about that. One question about that. Yeah. I do mean this is funny. So... You know, obviously, she she was I for, she was either I forgot the daughter or niece. Uh, she was the niece of um, 
of um, Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter. I thank you. I I can't yeah. believe I forgot her name. I used I love the TV show she had too, Agent Carter. Yeah. Uh, so brain slipped there for a minute. She was the <laughs> niece of Peggy Carter, but like Cap was macking on her, making out with her, and uh, in uh, in Winter yeah. Soldier. And then you find out he went back and had the relationship with Peggy. Yeah. But I guess that's an alternate timeline, right? So I guess that's maybe okay. I don't know. Yeah, it's an ultimate yeah, timeline. I mean, yeah, to me, that whole thing was always odd. Uh, yeah, so I'm glad they moved away from that. <laughs> I think they even realized that really came on. That was always pretty awkward. A <laughs> little bit of oversights. They have good plans, ultimately. Yeah. Um, so I know we talked a little bit about uh, Captain Marvel 2, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Is is there a particular film in Phase 4 that you're super excited about? And then also, you know, being being as into films as you are, you know, is there is there certain directions that you, you are both excited for? And then also, you know, certain maybe tropes that you saw in some of the other movies or certain things that they did in the past that you, you know, hope that they maybe stay away from as we as we get this new slate of films. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I'm pretty excited about the slate of films. And um, as far as what I'm most looking forward to, I mean, uh, you know, I know nothing about the Eternals. I know not, I've never read Eternals comics. Me nothing about that. I know nothing about those characters. But this is one of the projects I'm most intrigued about because, I mean, when you look at that cast, aside from, you know, all the Avengers movies – that always have, you know, insanely stacked cast. It's probably the best cast the Marvel's ever put together. No, it's it's phenomenal. And they yeah. do a good job with so I'm I, I'm a gigantic comic book nerd, but yeah. I grew up reading like as far as Marvel goes, X-Men, Spider-Man. Cause like I saw I was grabbing comics in the early nineties. I I'm, I'm dating myself maybe a little bit but that's what was popular because you had the cartoons supplementing you know the books and things too so you know you're watching saturday morning cartoons then you're going to go out to the comic book shop because you want to read more stories about these characters what, yeah. avengers like iron man cap black panther still had a good following but a lot of the uh, uh, thor a lot of those characters were like b-list at that time like people did not really care about the avengers and then uh, you know even as I got older and even like still getting books in high school and college, nobody cared about uh, guardians of the galaxy. If you, if you tell me you grew up reading, maybe not now so much anymore, but if you, if you're talking to a 30 year old or a 25 year old and they tell you they grew up reading uh, guardians of the galaxy or eternals, they're lying to you. Yeah. Nobody read those books. <laughs> nobody read those books. So Marvel is fantastic at taking lower tier and I apologize for calling Iron Man at this point, like lower tier or Thor yeah. or anybody else, but they did a fantastic job of taking characters that were not super mainstream and making amazing movies. So I, Eternals is probably going to be, like you said, the cast in and of itself is phenomenal. And Marvel mm -hmm. has a great history of, of really uh, making phenomenal films with lesser known characters. Yeah, exactly. Um, and not only that, um, They've got I think, one of the most promising up and coming directors right now with uh, directing it, uh, Chloe. Um, I forget how to pronounce the last name. <laughs> Apologies. But, um, you know, she just uh, directed right now. Uh, she's got a new movie out right now. I don't know if you heard of No Mud Land. I've heard of it. I know, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. you know zero about it. It's it's a it's a really beautiful film. It's uh yeah, it's with uh, Francis McDonan. It's I think on Hulu right now, actually. If you have Hulu, you can watch it right there on there now. And uh, it's one of the front runners for our best picture. And I got to see it thankfully uh, months ago, and um, we're very well deserved. So um, she's definitely coming a, a superstar director right now. In the making. So after I watched that, after I got the, you know, was fortunate to see that movie months ago at an early screening, um, I saw it and I was like, okay, I'm completely on board and sign me up for whatever movies she got moving forward. So seeing what she could bring to the table to something like um, the Eternals, you know, again, characters that I know nothing about, but with this cast. And then 
you got such a talented filmmaker behind it. This is definitely one of the projects that intrigues me the most moving forward. I think and, that's a really good point. I, I wasn't really thinking about it in those terms. I was, yeah. I, I think for me and probably even still for me, um, I always had really high hopes for Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. And then when they oh, yeah. announced uh, Sam Raimi. So yeah. this is not a popular thing, thing to say. Mm. I don't think Sam Raimi, aspects of it, yes. And I could go do a whole study on it in ad nauseum. I don't think Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies were that good. Oh, okay. Like one of the worst things I know I could say. I think every <laughs> single person he cast in those films, fantastic. I think the cast, the casting was done incredibly. I think, uh, I, I still think Spider-Man 2 is a phenomenal superhero movie. And I really love the first Spider-Man movie. Yeah. But I don't think he wrote it from a perspective of getting Peter Parker and I, and I, I think sometimes Toby uh, McGuire, I don't know, was a weird choice. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, as much as I loved like Willem Dafoe and Alfred Molina, um, yeah, I, I didn't care for that. But horror elements, like if you think of that operating scene, ta- uh, operating oh, table. Yeah. Phenomenal. And, yeah. The Dark Dark, t- yeah he's the perfect person to do a Dr. Strange movie. So I, I know I'm backhanding him and being insulting, but I, I, yeah. I was leading up to that. I, <laughs> I, I, I think he's going to thrive and excel for Dr. Strange. I think that that movie is going to be amazing because of him. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I mean, I do still have very much nostalgia and love for those first two Spider-Man movies. I still think uh, the second one for me is my favorite of all the live action ones. Um, I kind of go between back and forth between that now and Spider Verse. Says which one? Spider Verse is favorite. incredible. Yeah. So and I go back and we watch those movies so many times and I love them. Well, the less we say about about that uh, third film, the better. <laughs> That's not so. So I know I just like completely was like denigrating him. Yeah. The third one's not his fault. Avi Arad. No, no, no. Wanted yeah. all these characters, and you. To force yeah. somebody to use it. So for, Venom is one of my favorite characters growing up. I yeah. love Eddie Brock. Um, I haven't read a lot of the current stuff with that character in the comics mm-hmm. these days. But back, but back then, um, you know, from the cartoon and from the comics that I was reading, like I loved Eddie Brock. And I thought his yeah. story was actually really good. But to force somebody who's not familiar with the character, doesn't care about the character, doesn't really want to use the character... That's hard to do, but I did read some early drafts and saw concepts for what Sam Raimi did want to do in Spider-Man 3, and I know it's rumors and hearsay and stuff. That movie was never going to be good. It doesn't even matter, like, uh, (laughs) what we got isn't his fault, but what he wanted to do with, like, a vulture and, like, get Anne Hathaway to be, like, his daughter and, like, a female vulture and... uh, Yeah. Did you ever see any of that stuff? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've seen some of that stuff, and was that the plan? Because I... I know when, like, they were uh, okay because they had a lot of plans for Spider Man 4 too, which eventually obviously was canned. And I know, uh, I remember reading John Michaelvidge, supposed to be the vulture. Yeah. I don't know if that was Spider Man 3 or Spider Man 4. They were supposed to shoot him back to back, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And I mean, I'm in agreement with you. I, I don't think the problems with Spider Man 3 were all on him. A lot of it was just Sony executives, you know interfering way too much not letting him you know create his own movie ultimately and so there's a lot yeah those over there's a lot to i mean and we saw sony do it again <laughs> with uh the amazing spider-man 2 <laughs> they really really were dead set on shoehorning as many people to have their spin-off universes i mean they're still doing yeah. it to this day the Venom yeah. movie was kind of rushed out, like not to keep going on Venom diatribes, but like it's really super hard to establish Eddie Brock and Venom without Peter Parker and Spider Man. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I have never. I will not watch the Venom movies. I just like. Oh, you never did? <laughs> it just pisses me off to no end. I, that's yeah. just the nerd in me. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sure there's people who, because uh, Hardy's a great actor, so oh, I'm yeah. not gonna. I can't. I can't do it. Um, but speaking of Spider-Man, I guess we can talk about, cause that's coming out in December. Um, yeah. 
what have what have your thoughts been on the Tom Holland Spider Man films? And you know, with there's a nine hundred thousand rumors, so hopefully we're not wandavisioning ourselves with like getting all this. This should happen. That should happen. But oh, from yeah. what we know and from what you've seen in the past films, how do you feel about this upcoming uh, Spider Man No Way Home? Yeah, well, I mean, I've really enjoyed uh, both Tom Holland Spider Man movies thus far. Uh, I know a lot of people debate on if you go on Twitter, film Twitter, a lot of people, uh, intense debates about these two movies. Well, really any Spider-Man movie. I mean, <laughs> Spider-Man fans could be pretty vicious. <laughs> I've learned over the years. But I mean, I feel like out of all the actors who play Spider-Man, um, you know, as much as I have very much a soft spot for Tobey Maguire, and, uh, you know, as much as, you know, we like, a lot of people like to make fun of the Amazing Spider-Man movies, uh, Andrew Garfield is a, great act, is a great actor, and I don't fault him for those movies either. I feel like um, the, Tom Holland has been one to really great, get a great balance of being a, both a great Peter Parker and a great Spider-Man. Whereas, you know, Toby Guire to me was always, you know, I liked his Spider-Man. He was always a better Peter Parker, though. And the Spider-Man I thought in the original movies. And then, to me, you know, Andrew Garfield is a better Spy- Peter Par- Spider-Man than he was a Peter Parker. I so think, me, yeah. I think in my, my, I, I didn't like either side of Toby. I, I liked Toby, but I yeah. thought he was too, I don't know, kind of like whiny as Peter. And I didn't think, his Spider-Man was Spider-Man's borderline obnoxious because it's mm. Peter being able to let loose because he finally, I mean, he's not like, uh, you know, he's not power driven or power mad or anything because with great power comes great responsibility, but he was always able to be more of who he really wanted to be as Spider-Man. Yeah. I thought Andrew Garfield's and Tom Holland both do that aspect of Sp- Spider-Man with the quips and being obnoxious I just thought, I thought Garfield, I liked Garfield's Peter actually a lot, but at times he carried that sort of vibe into his Peter. And I didn't think he did as good of a job as he could kind of having that dichotomy. I mean, Spider-Man isn't Superman in terms of Clark Kent is, you know, mild mannered and then there's Superman. Yeah. Um, but there needs to be some level of duality in my opinion to those roles. Mm-hmm. And I, I do think, you know, Tom does that pretty, pretty well. My only main gripe with the Tom Holland movies is they really want to shoehorn Tony Stark into every aspect of Peter's life. Yeah, yeah that's... Um, I'm very excited for this upcoming film, and that's one thing I hope that they... You know, I, I haven't... I, I don't mind. I've actually liked, for the most part, the Peter Parker and Tony um, Stark, you know, mentorship, relationship, if you want to call it. Um, but I do hope moving forward especially with what they establish at the end of Far From Home, they are certainly going to detach, you know, move away from that. Because I think think they really need to. It's not the mentorship, I think, is an issue for for me anyway. But all the villains so far are connected to Tony. Yeah. And I I would like to maybe see that just – Peter's capable of having people hate him for him. He doesn't need them to hate him for Tony. Yeah, I don't want to see in, you know – the next one, uh, we love find out that Electro was once a electrician for Tony Stark. Yeah, that's that's where <laughs> I'd like to see it move away from. Um, if if that. if rumors are to be believed, um, yeah. what are your thoughts on perhaps seeing uh, you know McGuire and Garfield again and interacting with Tom Holland? Is is that exciting for you, or do you think that they're just doing that? You know, Spider Verse was super popular, so Sony's yeah. like, we need more Spider Verses, or, or you know, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts or feelings? Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm certainly excited to see them possibly return. I actually really like the idea, um, but you know, thrown on it because I want to see you know Tom get his own. I mean, I want to make sure that this movie is still very you know Tom Holland, Peter Parker, you know his Peter Parker centric. I don't want them to shoehorn in, you know, their occlusion. I mean, my. My uh, personal, you know, wish list would be to this be this movie to be really more about, 
you know, spoilers for Far From Home, but you know how at the end, you know, the, how, that was a game-changing cliffhanger. Oh, 100%. Peter's, yeah, Mysterio outs him, you know, as not only uh, being, Spider-Man being responsible for the drone attack, but his identity. So I, I'm more interested to see how he deals with, you know, the, rep- the consequences of what Mysterio does at the end, at the end there. You know, his identity fall fall out. I feel like that would be a much more interesting story for the door door to film than possibly Shuey Horning and any multiverse. So my wish list would be have Spider Man three be about re the consequences of what Mysterio did and how is he gonna deal with, you know, the entire world knowing who he is. And then maybe plant the seeds where you can do an individual you could do a really. I think Spider Verse would be is big enough to be its own thing. If that's something you want to do sometime in the future, I agree with you. I think they should yeah. do. They can maybe have some seeds and things, or maybe use either Toby or Maguire to unmask as Spider Man because the people in that universe. Yeah, that's are gonna... that's one thing you could, they could do. They can actually use the both of them, one of them at least, to um, you know um, throw off. <laughs> To be show the world that Peter Parker obviously isn't Spider Man. Oh, I hope they go that route. Um, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate you talking about the Marvel films with me. I appreciate you dissecting WandaVision with me. Um, as much as you love films, is there is there forgetting Marvel for a second? As much as I don't want to, uh, forgetting Marvel for a second, is there? You know, give me a film, and, and I know we mentioned No Man Land. Um, a film that came out that people should see and one that's coming out uh, soon that you, that you're excited to see and, you know, want to review. All right. Yeah. Um, one movie that, you know, cause you know, world series season is up upon us. The Oscars are upon us. Um, a movie I really recommend there, but I don't know, but well, it's a very dark movie. So I, I got to stress that. So I, <laughs> I got to stress and, you know, make sure that I recommend it to right people, but um, it's a promising young woman. I had not seen that. My wife wants to see that. Yeah, Carrie Mulligan. Uh, very, very good movie. Uh, that was actually probably my favorite movie of this award season. Um, you know, Carrie Mulligan's up for, well, I mean, the Oscar nominations haven't come out yet, but uh, – I'm hoping we see her win Best Actress. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case, but um, that's really high up on my recommendation list. I'll say it's it's a very dark movie. Um, I don't know if you've seen the trailers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, it's but it's also very unpredictable. I mean, uh, I've been this surprised and I'd say caught off guard by a movie in quite a long time. Um, I got to see it back, I think it was actually on New Year's Day when I went to, um, actually went to the theaters to go see it. And um, I was walking out of it and I was um, thinking that myself, you know, out of all the movies I've seen in like the past year, this was the movie that made me miss, you know, the most, more than any movie, miss seeing a movie with like a really big crowd. Oh, I'm hoping really we get big. to that again. Yeah. Yeah, and then what's really what's important. your uh, what's your most anticipated? This morning? Excuse me, that's my sorry. I don't know if you hear that. That's my dog. <laughs> I've had dogs on the show, cats on the show. What happens, man? That's that's what we get for Zoom interviews. That's yeah, all. Sorry good. about that. No, it's, it's okay. Uh, but um, yeah, what I'm look. I mean, it's so hard right now to make like an anticipation list because we don't know how. how what the slate is going to look like. <laughs> movies are, so many movies are moving, you know. It's true. The slates keep going around. But on the bright side, when they, when they do come out, um, your, your, your blogging is on uh, Letterboxd, and that's Letterboxd and then D.com. Um, and then what's, what's – and I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the description too so people can click and get to it. Um, what's, your, what's your user account on there? A lot of box uh, sync uh, world movie fan it is uh, 97 
Yeah, I think, and I'll, I'll grab it. I'll grab it from uh, Twitter and people can follow you. I'll put your Twitter handle down too. So people could get your opinions oh. and everything on there as well. No. Um, and then baseball season is going to be upon us. And I know you and I are big yes. Yankee fans, so we'll probably see some of that yeah. too. But yeah. uh, Will, thank you so much for coming on and talking to me about Marvel, about WandaVision, about movies. Uh, it was great talking to you. Um, this, thank you. I, re- I record these uh, randomly and they come out every Tuesday. Yeah. So this upcoming Tuesday or when you people are clicking on it. Um, yes. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for coming on. And for, in, for taking uh, my point of view. Thanks, Will. Thanks. Thank you for having me.